Hi, in this video I want to have a look at the evidence for the composition and structure of the oceanic crust. Remember, for most of the time we're not going to be able to see it. There's only going to be a few places around the world where the oceanic crust will uh, appear above sea level. Iceland, for example. But that might be an exception. How can we work out what's actually beneath the surface? We can see from this map that there's a pattern, a uniformity to the oceanic crust. We need to ask ourselves as geologists, does that extend beneath the surface? We get our evidence for the composition and structure of the crust from two sources. The first of these is a set of rocks we call ophiolites. Now this is a collection of igneous rocks and deep water sediments that are found when um, we get two plates colliding and we get uh, scraping off of oceanic material uh, that then accretes onto the continent. You can see on this map the red areas that show uh, where rocks like this formed when Africa and Eurasia uh, collided with each other as an ocean called Tethys closed. Now for our purposes there are two of these ophiolites that preserve these features very well. One of them in Cyprus and the other in Oman. These two sets of rocks we think give us the evidence for the composition of the oceanic crust. We'll look at that evidence in a moment. The second piece of evidence, which shows us more about the structure of the crust, and in particular showing us how we have a layered structure within the oceanic crust, comes from seismic evidence. If we look at the changing speed of seismic waves, we see as they pass through the oceanic crust, there are some distinct changes. These we can link back uh, to layers, and particulars we find this in a very um, uniform way across all ocean basins. We don't see any changes either between oceans or even. Uh, with different ages of rock in oceans. Crucially, these velocity measurements that we get from the different layers are equivalent to what we find uh, in the ophiolites. So we can unpick the composition, or we, should I say we match the composition of rocks from the ophiolite sequences with the seismic evidence uh, to show us which layers they can be found in. Let's have a look at these layers. The topmost layer, layer 1, as we can see in the photograph, is a series of laminated deep marine sediments, typically black shales. These are obviously going to accumulate over time, so layer 1 will be thicker uh, in older areas of oceanic crust and thinner uh, in oceanic crust that's closer to constructive plate margins. Layer 2a beneath that is the igneous rock that's erupted at the ocean bottom. As a result, this layer is made of basaltic pillow lavas. Beneath that then, layer 2b, is a sequence of uh, sheeted dolerite dikes. These are the pathways for the magma to reach the surface. We see large numbers of parallel dikes formed by crustal tension uh, at constructive plate margins allowing that magma to rise. Because it's intrusive, it cools a little bit slower, so the, re the resulting rock is, is dolerite. Beneath layer 2b, then, the main bulk of the oceanic crust 
layer 3 is again mafic in composition, but because this is deeper and perhaps represents the magma chambers that we'd find between oceanic uh, con constructive or divergent margins, this rock is gabbro. Near the bottom, it may well be layered as well as in this photograph. Beneath layer 3 then, and below the moho, we've got the mantle. And the mantle is formed of peridotite, an ultramafic igneous rock. The layered peridotite we find at the top of the mantle is probably magma differentiation from the gabbro where you get early formed olivines sinking to the bottom. So our oceanic crust has this distinctive layered structure that appears to be uniform across all the ocean basins. Our interpretation of this is that this oceanic crust is caused by a mafic um, rock being formed by partial melting of the lithospheric mantle, melted by heat rising from mantle plume. That forms a magma chamber, which may cool slowly to form a gabbro. The dikes then uh, allow the magma to rise up uh, towards the surface, perhaps as it's pulled apart by um, crystal tension, and then erupted at the surface of the seabed as magma to create the pillows. What's created then is this simple conveyor belt mechanism, constantly generating new oceanic crust. So, we can see from this that there's good pieces of evidence to suggest that we have a layered structure of different types of mafic and ultramafic rocks formed by uniform processes at all divergent plate margins. But if we think about it carefully, all of this evidence is actually secondary evidence. Perhaps the only way to really work it out is to actually drill into those rocks and find out exactly what's there. Anyway, don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.